This is Alim from Javelin. In this video, I will present a solution to an old solver's mating problem. The ability to constrain an object, like this pin, inside a, a given a close contour. In this case would be this pocket, so as you can see I can move it anywhere inside the area, or actually the volume, uh, defined by, by this pocket. So it, can, it cannot go past that. And this is probably a simpler uh, case, let's take a look at another one where the pocket doesn't have parallel faces or um, concentric faces. So I can achieve the same thing with, uh, with this technique. Allow me to start from uh, a case where I don't have this constraining. So as you can see the pin can go through the pocket at will. Uh, the only mate that I have right now is just a coincidence made between the bottom faces. So I ensure that uh, this doesn't sync otherwise. The first thing you might think is, well, you might want to create a surface and uh, measuring this uh, pin, which is one inch diameter, maybe I'm gonna create a surface on the bottom of this part that's gonna be defined by um, an offset of uh, half an inch, right? The radius of that pin. So let me just build a planar surface right there. And the idea would be that if I take the center point of the bottom face of this and I place it on this face with a coincident mate, that should keep this point captive inside this surface. The only problem with this logic is that the way uh, coincident mating in SOLIDWORKS is implemented is not really looking for this type of uh, uh, constraints. What happens in, uh, in real life, any surface in SOLIDWORKS, any face in SOLIDWORKS actually, can be untrimmed or most of them can be untrimmed. So if I'm running the untrim command you can see the patch from which this is being cut. Especially if it's a planar surface, this can be untrimmed to pretty much to infinity, meaning that that point is just going to move on a, on an infinite uh, space. So that would not work. Allow me to, to just delete uh, these three surfaces. I'm, I'm just going to maintain the sketch for now. So what do I need? Looks like uh, the best thing would be to create a surface like that, but that's going to be degenerate, the one that cannot untrim. There are a couple of ways to do that. Um, some of you might think to use the fill surface. Uh, one thing I found out with fill surfaces they would most of the times they would be able to untrim. The best candidates would be uh, swept aloft or boundaries, especially swept. In this case I'm going to use boundaries. So we already know that if I um, try to run boundary on uh, on planar entities like let's go from here maybe uh, sorry let's use the selection manager so let's run selection manager so from here to here with guide curves starting on the top along these edges and on the bottom along these edges so the direction to this is a boundary it doesn't have guide curves what you're getting in reality is still a planar surface that can be untrimmed. So this is not the solution. We need to add a bit of complexity to this surface. I tried a free form and I found out it still uh, allows you to untrim in the end. So let's try something else instead. I'm just going to go before the boundary was created. Um, show uh, this sketch. And let's create a plane that's going to pass through these two points and maybe it's going to be normal to, to this face. Okay, of course you can use a 3D sketch, you can use anything else that's going to allow you to add another curve. So I'm just going to start with a, with a two-point arc uh, that's going to connect those uh, two points. You can add a radius if you want. Right now I'm just going to leave it under constraint um, just because I, I might want to adjust that if needed. So let's come back to the present. I'm just going to add one more thing to this boundary surface on the first direction. I'm going to add this sketch I just created. 
So let's see if it's going to allow me to do that. There you go. So at this point, this is no longer planner. And if I try to untrim it, it doesn't want to untrim any further. So looks like we are in a good spot. Let's switch back to to the assembly. Of course, this coincident fails. And uh, considering that this is now a 3D surface, it's no longer 2D, I cannot really attach this point to it. I have to be creative and add another type of moving point. So for that, I'm going to insert a new part inside the assembly. I'm going to click on the empty area in order to place the the part with a fixed condition, so no in place mate, and I'm going to float it. I'm going to take the origin of this new part and I'm going to make it coincident to this surface. And I'm going to add another mate to this origin, a mate to the temporary axis of the cylinder. So if I show the temporary axis, I'm just going to take the two, apply a coincident mate. At this point, I can even hide the surface if I want to. So let's do just that and maybe even hide this sketch. Hide the temporary axis, hide the origins, everything that would add too much information. So as you can see right now, that point, the, uh, the origin of that dummy part is actually captive inside that surface, cannot move anywhere else. The fact that it moves up and down, it's irrelevant because for us, it's still connected to the blue part on the axis of that blue part. Another example, the one that uh, I showed you here, the, the generate uh, surface that I created, uh, again, I use boundary and it's is not actually too much, uh, again, too much work there. I added just an arc here. One thing that I noticed is that this works the best if uh, the pocket that you try to create has a mostly convex, uh, convex, a convex shape. If it's uh, very irregular, it's very hard to create only one face uh, with, the, with the correct offset. And again, a face that cannot be untrimmed. So you shouldn't be able to untrim this face. If you can untrim it, that means that the mate is, uh, is going to fail. I hope uh, you liked it. Let me know if you can think of other uh, solutions for, for this problem. Thank you very much.